Man, consistency is not my thing. Uh, hello everyone, hope you all doing well. Before we start today's video, I would like to mention the channel's growth in the past couple months. We went from 20 to 32 subscribers. So to the uh, one, two, three, 12. 12 of you, I would like to say thank you. Hey, what if by the time this video comes out, you lose subs? That'd be pretty embarrassing. How are you gonna get them to stay? Today, we'll look at the main parts of APC and see what they do. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the most famous component, the CPU. Which stands for Central Processing Unit, also known as a processor. You might have heard it being called the brain of all PCs, and that's because, well, it pretty much does all of the thinking. Without it, you wouldn't be able to do anything. Computers need to do a shitload of math and processing in order to work properly, and they need to be done fast, stupid fast, and so we need a smart ass to handle all of that. That's where the CPU comes into play. It takes instructions from RAM, which we'll get into in a bit, performs logical and arithmetic operations with it, and then gives an output. Sort of like uh, a brain. All we're dealing with here is a small integrated circuit or chip made up of silicon. It has millions or even billions of these tiny little things called transistors, which allows it to do multiple sets of complex tasks. The speed of a CPU is measured in gigahertz, which equals to 1 billion. So a CPU that has a speed of 3.99 gigahertz can do 3.99 billion things per second. It's insane how something so small can be so effective. It's not the size that matters, okay? It's the motion. Please don't. So. Whether you're using a word processor, watching a video, or deleting your search history, just know your CPU is in the background doing all of the calculations to make that possible. Here's a little side note, the two most popular brands of CPUs are Intel and AMD. Go in the comments and fight over which one you think is better. I personally think- Next is RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory, aka Primary Storage, Main Memory, or just Memory. Like I said before, this is where your CPU fetches instructions to execute. It's a device that temporarily stores information inside your computer. Data is only stored in RAM when the power is on. Once the power is off, all of it is erased, lost, gone. This is what we call volatile memory. So think of data in RAM like the light in your refrigerator. It turns on when the fridge door opens and turns off when the fridge door closes. Or does it? When you double click or open up a program, it loads into RAM. RAM serves as a place for the things you're currently using. Well, what does that mean? Here's an analogy. Let's pretend you're actually good at something, say, like carpentry. And this table is your workstation. On it, you got your tools that you're planning on using. And so, the table would be your RAM, the tools would be your programs, and you would be the CPU. The more space you have on your table, as in the more RAM you have, the more tools you can have on it, as in the more programs you can load into it. But how much RAM do you need? Well, it really depends on what you're doing. Here's a tier list I've constructed based on whether you interact with a user interface or input device such as a joystick, controller, keyboard, or motion sensing device to generate visual feedback for a player. In other words, if you're a gamer. At 2 gigabytes, you're not a gamer. Anything lower than this is basically useless. 4 gigs, noob. 6 gigs, gamer. 8 gigs, pro gamer. 16 gigs, hardcore gamer. 32 gigs and up, Newellism is my religion. Can't believe this is an actual thing. Moving on to storage, also known as secondary storage. This can come in two main forms. Well, technically three main forms. There are hard disk drives, solid state drives, and optical drives. We're not gonna talk about that last one, because at the moment, these two are looking like this, and this one is looking like that. It's just not as popular. Before differentiating these two though, let's first see what they do and have in common. Unlike RAM over here that suffers from Alzheimer's, these guys can store data more or less permanently, even when there's no electricity. This is what we call non-volatile memory. Yeah, listen! That's called motherfucking bars! Your important files and programs are saved there. Remember, when your programs are up and running, they live in RAM, the table. But when power is absent, they live in your storage. We can picture that place as a garage, where you keep all your other tools for later use. A garage is obviously bigger than a table, so it contains more space. They can store around 500 gigs to 2 terabytes of memory, 
while RAM can only store around 8 to 32 gigs. Now let's see how these differ. Hard drives have moving parts while solid state drives don't. Hard drives use mechanical platters to store data, solid state drives use memory chips. Because of this, SSDs are faster. However, hard drives are cheaper and has a higher capacity. Now for the GPU, which stands for Graphics Processing Unit. It's also called a graphics card. Actually, I'm here to tell you that a GPU and a graphics card aren't necessarily the same. You see, the GPU is just a part of the graphics card. It's the chip. The graphics card is the hardware as a whole. It houses the GPU, including other stuff like memory, eight sinks, and- Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you, thank you, you fucking nerd. He's right though, these terms are different, but they can sometimes be used interchangeably. Just keep their slight differences in mind. Just like the CPU, the GPU is also a processor. It's a specialized brain for your graphics card that performs calculations. Well, what sort of calculations? You see, everything on your screen is made entirely of pixels. And with the help of the GPU, the graphics card's job is to calculate how these pixels should be displayed onto your monitor. By the way, the names of these graphics cards just sound hella complicated to me. I mean, come on, GTX 1650, RTX 2070, RX 5700 XT. They deadass sound like area codes, but let's move on. The power supply. This component receives power from an electrical outlet and converts it to what your computer needs so it doesn't go boom boom. And yeah, that pretty much summarizes it. And last but not least, the motherboard. This is the component that brings everything together. It's the mother of all the components. Every other part is connected to it some way somehow. Some are directly attached to it and some are plugged. It's the primary circuit board inside your PC. It allows all the parts of your computer to receive power and communicate with one another. It has several ports where you can plug in peripherals such as speakers, mouse and keyboards, headsets, or webcams. You can even upgrade your motherboard through what are called expansion slots. They're sockets where you can add extra components called cards to enhance performance, which I think is pretty cool. And that's it. That's the end. If you're new and you're not subscribed, please consider it. If you're not new and you're not subscribed, your breath stinks. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you then. Take care.